If you're an Alfa Romeo guy like so many on my channel and your life is mean because your car is a rust bucket and if you think that a Porsche could be the solution, uh, you know... These cars are great, but they do no corrosion. The most serious issues usually can be found in the area of B-pillar and checking point where half a dozen of panels meet at a space not much bigger than some packs of cigarettes or a bottle of wine. My 87 Carrera is plagued by some pre-owner's orgy of what he thought would be rust protection. Enormous layers of pointless grease stuff that avoid emerging rust being discovered in time and make it impossible to keep the car clean. It had to go away at all costs and efforts. And while you're watching me disassembling the car in order to get proper access to the hidden parts of the wee well, you also get a sneak preview of the work to be published in the next weeks. Films about the restoration of the oil system, the rear suspension and the brakes are going to follow now on a weekly base. After some tough and painful cleaning efforts lasting for several hours, I examined the stone guard and guess what? Of course it was damaged. This is a 30 minute repair if one obtains timely insight that there is a problem. If not, uh, see yourselves. My sandblasting machine is a nuisance, but it does have one advantage. The blasting unit can be separated from the box and used at the car. The cleaner the panel got, the more myself I looked like a pig and my workshop was an absolute mess. But I pay that price gladly if a rust-free panel is what I get. It turned out that three small spots had rusted through. Too little a damage to replace the whole panel. I thought about welding in some self-made repair panels but I first wanted to give it a try to simply weld the holes up. It's of course hopeless to think that pointing the gun into the hole will just fit it up and all will be fine. One needs to identify the places where the material is firm enough to take a welding spot at all and build up some thickness there. The idea is to basically create a torus around the hole before it can be closed. Let's listen to the sound of welding.
the torus mustn't become too fat because that would only add thickness to the panel but doesn't help filling the hole. Sanding it all down from time to time helps to keep the repair in plane. Eventually closing the hole required full concentration and more light and I'm sorry that I cannot offer you a better angle here. With all the three holes welded up the same way, how does the flip side look? Yeah, you know, not perfect and a bit bulgy, but it's all made of solid metal again and this will be covered with stone guard anyway. Next steps. Removing all loose stone guard, cleaning it one more time and using Brunox to cover any spot that encountered rust before. In my last films I have elaborated quite a bit about how Porsche did their rust protection back in the 80s. The basic concept was thick layers of rubber coating and to me the best way of reproducing this with today's material is an undercoat of body sealant to cover all gaps and above that a coat of synthetic rubber stone guard from the rattle can. While I'm restoring this anti-roll bar mount, I'd like to suggest to you to consider signing up to my channel and turning the bell on and sending me a like or comment if you enjoy my work or if you just find it entertaining and relaxing to watch. If you enjoy it so much that the days between the releases seem like the empty void to you, you may also join me on Instagram where I publish progress practically every day.
As already explained in my recent films, I've learned to love working with water paint, but there is no alternative to covering it with a coat of two component clear. And in the very moment when I put aside the spray gun, you have to know that I much enjoy working in the early morning hours, a beautiful dawn broke and drenched the workshop in magic light. But all this magic light, it shone on ugly naked steel and underlined that there yet was work to do. In order to get proper access to the area to be repainted, I removed the door sill and the sill cover. I found this paint irregularity and I was about to do spot repair anyway, so I looked behind it, which turned out to be overcautious. The crucial point of these spot repairs is to fill the area so that it levels out with the existing paint. Everything else is easy. The one thing to focus on is to make the repair patch flush with the surrounding paint. The resources at one's disposal are polyester putty and two component filler. I'm using 3M's system of sanding sponges starting with the so-called medium and fine grit for the putty fine and super fine for the filler and later on I'll use ultra fine and micro fine to blend in the clear coat. The main part of the leveling work is assigned to the two component filler. I'm applying a layer, drying it with the hot air gun, applying another layer, drying it. This is repeated five times at least and specific irregularities are filled with the brush by dribbling a paint drop into the wet filler. Next step, masking, applying soft edge tape to the transition area and doing the base coat. It's very important that in the next step the clear coat covers all the transition area of the base coat plus some extra which will be used to sand down the transition area of the clear coat. Two centimeters are an absolute minimum.
I think the result is acceptable and I really hope you'll join me for the restoration of the brakes and the rear axle. See you all soon. Thank you.